screen recording and audio recording. Hopefully this tutorial will go okay. This is the shot that we're using today. I took this in the Maldives using a Sony RX100 Mark III. Um, for those of you that don't know, that's a pretty middle of the road point and click camera. No detachable lens. Um, it might shoot raw, but in this instance, this is a JPEG. So this is a pretty good representation of what the average person looking to get into Instagram will be using and shooting with. Now I've purposely used this shot because I want the results that you get to be the same as me. If I was shooting this with a $10,000 camera and a $5,000 lens, then we're obviously gonna have differing results. But seeing as I've used a regular camera and I've shot it in JPEG mode, just with your standard settings, I think this is a pretty good image to use to show you how you can use an average camera and still get that awesome travel blogger look. So the first thing I'm gonna do, which is annoying me like crazy, is actually fix the horizon. I don't know if you can see that, but for me, I can see that it's a little bit wonky and it's doing my head in. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the, uh, I think that's like a spirit level icon, and I'm just gonna draw a line across the horizon and you'll notice immediately the image is fixed. I'm gonna go ahead and hit return and boom, that immediately looks a lot better. I like to work my way from the top right the way to the bottom of this panel. Typically, I start at the top, and when I get to the bottom, I'm done. That's the photo, pretty much good to go. So let's go ahead and do that today. So let's start with the basics. Firstly up here, you've got the eyedropper tool, which is the white balance selector. So once you've clicked that, you can go here and choose any gray area, like a neutral gray. So you might come over here, it's probably a bit too dark. Down here, maybe a bit too light. I think here's a pretty good neutral gray, like that mid gray. If I click that, watch what happens. Boom. If I was in a hurry, that would be pretty much what I would need to do to get started. But because I wanna show you everything in this right hand develop panel, I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. And we're gonna do everything manually so I can show you what I typically do on a shot like this. So the first thing I wanna do is give this image just a little bit more warmth. I'm quite happy with the way it's balanced. I love pure skin tones here and I love the grays of the building. So I don't wanna adjust this too much. So I'm just gonna move this up maybe like two, three, four, I think that's probably okay. And then I want to slide everything a little bit more towards the green. So you can see it's, it's starting to pop a little bit. When I bring it right the way down, it pops. Now the exposure looks good. There's nothing too blown out and there's nothing too dark. So I'm actually gonna leave that as it is. Um, and the contrast looks good too underneath here. The blacks are quite nice. So I'm not complaining about that. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is adjust the highlights. And I'm gonna bring the highlights down to around about maybe 50. That looks quite good. And then with the shadows, I'm gonna pump those up to a run, whoa, maybe not that much actually, maybe I will. Maybe we'll go quite high on this. We'll go around 75. The whites are fine. I'm happy with the way the clouds look. Um, they're not too blown out. If I went really heavy on the white, you'd see they'd start to bleach out and that's never a good look. So I'm gonna undo that and put that back to zero. And with the blacks, I'm gonna raise those up just a touch because that's just my personal preference. I quite like the way that looks. So you can see already, it's starting to look a little brighter in those areas. There's a little more detail in the darks, which is exactly what I wanna do. Next, clarity. I'm going to reduce the clarity a little bit. I'm personally not a fan of clarity. You might love it, but whenever I see clarity, especially on skin tones, it just makes people's skin look a bit more dirty. It brings out wrinkles, it brings out blemishes, and it's just not something I love. If you're shooting something like architecture, Clarity is amazing, go nuts. But if there's a person in the shop, I tend to uh, I tend to roll it back a little. Now I also wanna put a little bit more saturation in here, maybe just six, just to give it a little bit more kick. I'll show you why later, that might seem counterintuitive right now, but it will, trust me, it's gonna look good. The next main segment you're gonna work on, and I like to spend a fair bit of time here, is the tone curve. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is put some key points so that I don't mess everything up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is crush the blacks. If you watch our vlogs or look at any of Pia's photos on Instagram, you'll know that that's something I personally love to do. Um, again, personal preference, I just like it. So I'm gonna bring those blacks up. So you can see here, underneath the houses, the blacks are pretty dark. However, when I pull this up like so, you can see the blacks get crushed. The detail is lost in those areas and I just think it gives it a more retro vibe. It's just something I personally love. 
I'm probably going to raise the dark areas just a touch as well so that curve is a little smoother. And that's all I'm going to do with the tone curve for now. We might tweak that again in a bit, but for now that's pretty okay. Now the next palette we're going to work through is the Hue, Saturation and Luminance palette. Now you might have this set up in a bit of a different way to me. Um, if you have, you can just change it to whatever your personal preference is. I typically like to have mine set on all HSL, but you might just want to adjust the hue separately, the saturation separately, or the luminance. But ultimately, if you click all, it just shows everything all in one go. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is adjust the hues. Now this doesn't adjust the saturation at all, it just adjusts the direction in which the colors lean. So here with the reds, I'm gonna give this a little bit of a boost plus five. With the oranges, I'm gonna lean these towards the reds. Now, the reason for that, let me just put that at about minus 15, 13, that'll do. The reason for that is Pia's skin is orange here. You can see that. And skin tones typically fall in this orange hue. So if I want her to look a little bit tanned and a little bit more bronzed, I need to grab this and adjust it down and push it towards the reds. You can see if I push it too far, she ends up looking like a beetroot. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave that at about minus 12, minus 13, something like that. With the yellows, I'm just gonna knock them back just a touch because if you do that, it gives her that golden, golden look, which is quite nice. Now with the greens, I'm gonna pump that up. I want the greens to go towards the blues. I think that's gonna look real nice in this specific photo. So I'm gonna grab the greens and I'm gonna pump those up by a fair amount. I'm gonna put that up about maybe 15. Okay, next we're gonna look at the aquas. Now the aqua is the ocean color here in this particular shot. And you'll see it's super green, which looks beautiful, but it's not what I want. So I'm gonna crank that up quite heavily. Yeah, think about there. You see how that's really turned like a, a beautiful blue. That's what I want this shot to look like. And I wanna go ahead and make the sky to about 20. If I just flick between the two, you'll see how that changes quite a lot. Now with the purple and magentas, there's not much purple or magenta in this shot, so you can just leave that. So let's go ahead and move down to saturation. I like everything to be a little less saturated. So we're gonna move this down to about minus 30 for the reds. The oranges, I don't wanna to be too much, so maybe 27. The yellows, maybe up there. The greens, I wanna remove quite a lot. And the aqua, I wanna push down as well. And when you do that, you'll notice it makes the ocean look clearer. And with the blues, I'm really gonna desaturate that sky. I want that to look like a, a retro image. There we go, that's nice. See how the blue of that sky has just gone, but doesn't it look great? The luminance affects the brightness. So if I grab oranges, for example, which is pure skin tone, and I drag it right the way down, you'll see that she gets really dark, or Conversely, I can lighten that right the way up. So this is the panel I tend to play with a little bit. I just go through every color, go up, go down, and just see what my personal preference is. Um, with the reds here, I think I wanna go down a bit, just a touch. And with the oranges, I wanna go down quite a bit more. Just wanna give Pia that real, real nice tan. There we go, that's great. Be nice if you shed that tan in real life. Now with the yellows, I'm gonna push it quite high because what it does is it makes the highlights of Pia's skin a bit lighter, you'll see how it kind of gives her that glow. It's like she's got moisturizer on when you push the yellows up. So we'll leave that up around about 40. The greens can pretty much stay where they are, I think. I don't think that's gonna really affect too much. No, not really. With the aqua, I'm just gonna drop it down a touch. I think it might look a little bit too bright right now. Something like that. And with the blues, I want that sky to get even lighter. So I'm gonna push it a bit higher. I love it when the sky is like blue, but almost white. It really gives it an airy feeling, it's really nice. So I think we'll leave that around about 20. And you can see messing with the purple, messing with the magenta, it literally does barely anything to this photo because there isn't any of those colors in this shot. So if there were colors, then we'd play with that. But right now that's, that's pretty good. So sharpening is something I typically do in Lightroom rather than Instagram. I know that Instagram does have a sharpen filter and sometimes I'll use it, but I actually prefer the sharpening in Lightroom. It's just a bit nicer, it's a more professional app, so it does a better job. So to show you what that looks like, I'm gonna zoom in on the area up here, which is the, the thatched roof, and I'm just gonna sharpen this to around about 20 or 30, just to show you. And when I switch the detail back on and back off, you can really see it makes a really big difference, but it doesn't affect the skin tones too much, which is what I want because you don't want every pore and everything to be super sharp and you know that's not very nice to look at. 
Now scrolling down further, we've got lens correction. We don't need that because this was shot with a standard point and click. And then we get to effects. Now effects is quite an interesting one. I see a lot of people use vignetting. I personally don't like it, but seeing as this is my first tutorial, I should show you what it is. If I drag this to the left, it just darkens the edges, a bit like an old time photo. And if you go to the right, it will lighten the edges. Um, unless you're making really bad wedding invites, I don't know why you'd want to use that, but I guess some people do. Then we get to grain. Now this is something I have a particular issue with because I love film grain, but I do see it overused a lot. And I think it's overused a lot when people use apps on their phones to add grain at small sizes. So when you've got a small screen and you're adding grain, you can't really tell whether you've added too much or too little. But in Lightroom, because you're on a big screen, you can see it quite nicely. And I typically use around about 25, 25 and 25. Um, obviously that's provided you haven't down the image at all. This is the full resolution JPEG image. And when you zoom in, you just get a nice little grain, which when you put into Instagram, it just looks nice. Camera calibration is something you probably don't need to use too much. I'm quite happy with the way this shot looks, but for the sake of this demonstration, I will show you what it does. So all images are made of red, green, and blue, RGB. And this panel controls how much of each color comes into the picture and thus controls what your picture looks like. So if I wanted no red to be in this picture, I could just drop that out. The picture remains the same, but there's no red. Everything you see here is now made of just green and blue. So this is a little bit of trial and error because you don't know how each photo is gonna react because every photo is taken in a different environment. I'm just gonna go ahead and tweak these just a touch. Now if I go ahead and switch back to the original image, it's a pretty big difference. And what you'll see there is we've managed to bring out the skin tones, make them look super sun-kissed. The sky has been pushed right the way back to an almost gray, like a gray blue, which gives it a really nice retro look. The blacks are crushed, so the detail in those areas is gone. And you'll see that water has gone from a beautiful green to an almost clear blue, which is exactly what I wanted. So I hope you enjoyed it. That was my first tutorial. I think that was helpful, I hope it was. If there is anything else you'd like to see, please make sure you comment below and give this video a like as well, because if you don't, I don't know if you even want any more of these videos and maybe you just want vlogs. So please give this video a like and I will see you next time.